It's not too late. It's not too difficult. Oh, it's such a difficult. We're talking about choosing the bean chili instead of the beef chili. You know, that's the huge sacrifice we're being asked to make here. If you've not seen a film called Forks Over Knives, please do so. You will see people transforming before your very eyes from being overweight, hypertensive, diabetic, clogged up and inflamed to becoming lean and healthy with, with free of disease um, for the simple expediency of adopting a plant-based diet right before your eyes. Then after you've seen the film, go back to the Forks Over Knives website. They've got wonderful transition plans. They've got recipes and transition plans to take you by the hand and help you transition. If you've not seen a film called Game Changers, see, I know so many people, I don't want to go vegan. They're all skinny. I don't want to lose my manly power. Uh, it turns out that a plant-based diet uh, will fuel superb athletic performance in the human body. And you certainly don't need to eat a bull to be as strong as one. Ask any buffalo, any giraffe, any elephant uh, that you can grow magnificent uh, mammalian muscles on a plant-based diet. And if those of you who have this, any anxiety about your musculature on a plant-based diet, I ask you to behold these magnificent specimens. Do any of these people look protein deficient to you? Um, I, I know most of them personally, and uh, uh, their various their their very physical natures uh, communicate the message uh, that you don't have to be to eat a bull to be as strong as one. For the health professionals, please educate yourselves about these issues and how plant-based nutrition is the premier dietary and therapeutic tool that you can uh, uh, offer to your patients. Uh, go to these websites. Go to Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Uh, we've got lots of free CME there. Uh, go to Jeff Novick, a vegan dietitian's website. Definitely become a regular visitor to Dr. Greger's nutritionfacts.org. Uh, PCRM has a 21 day Kickstarter, so does uh, Rochester Lifestyle Medicine. Uh, Ginny, uh, Ginny Messina's uh, Vegan RD is a great website. Please, Dr. McDougall's newsletter is an education in itself. Uh, subscribe to his newsletter, read uh, all his relevant ones to you. You'll, it's an education in itself. Dr. Furman offers a great nutrition course. Uh, vegan dietitian, uh, uh, Vasanto Molina's NutriSpeak is a wonderful website. The University of Winchester has a six-week online course in applied plant-based nutrition. I think I have a slide on that. Take that course. I took it and learned a ton. Go to my website, drclabber.com, see my video, Thriving on a Plant-Based Diet. <clears throat> so educate yourself. Then transform yourself like I have. I base most every decision and by every purchase I make, every airline ticket I buy, and every conversation I have to, I compare it to the standards, is this going to result in fewer animals being eaten? I will not make a purchase, will not get on an airplane unless the total, unless the, the result of those actions are going to be fewer animals being eaten. So use your purchase power. That's when people say, well, I've got no power. Yes, you do. Every time you pull that wallet out and pull that credit card out, you are changing the world. You are making a statement. And it starts with the food you order at the restaurant and what you put in your shopping cart at home. <clears throat> so I invite you to join uh, the True Health Initiative, Dr. David Katz and his crew at THI for No Beef Week. It starts this Monday from April 18th through the 24th. <clears throat> the global demand for beef is the leading driver of deforestation in the Amazon. Vow for this week and hopefully long term after that, that you're going to eat no beef uh, this week. Start with that. It, beef uh, production is by far the, the most egregious driving factor in our environmental problems. <clears throat> uh, and, uh, and, as, and don't despair to think that things aren't changing. They are. I've been in the plant-based promotion game since 1981, okay, 40 years ago. Look at what has happened since then. I, I get such encouragement by looking at what is now available, how each of our efforts has transformed the world. 
Uh, here's an Now Now magazine, vegan food and living. Whoever thought we'd see that? Or 23 Buddha Bowl recipes. Costco now has organic produce. Uh, whoever thought we would see that? You can certainly eat a healthy vegan diet at home. And when you're out, if you don't have the Happy Cow app on your cell phone, please go to happycow.net, download it. And no matter where you are in the world, literally, if you're in, in Vienna or Vietnam, pull out your phone, fire up Happy Cow, and it will show you all the vegan restaurants, health food stores, vegan friendly uh, places to eat in your immediate area there. And, and this is such a powerful driving imperative and an understanding that is permeating into every aspect of our lives. And, and it's so reassuring to see uh, people understanding this truth and then acting on it. And it's permeating into our daily lives. Uh, uh, here is the owner of one of the most exclusive restaurants in New York, 11 Madison Park, going vegan. Never would have done that five or 10 years ago. Here's McDonald's. You know, I've got a, I've got a file on, on my computer called Things I Never Thought I'd See. And here's one right out of that file. McDonald's is putting a plant burger uh, on their recipe, on their menu. Whoever thought we would see that? But that's such a powerful validation. When and if, if McDonald's does it, you know that Wendy's and Burger King going to be right behind. And sure enough, here they are offering their Impossible Whoppers and uh, their uh, black bean burgers, etc. Nearly 25% of people are now, they've, they've tried or are eating uh, these plant-based meats on a regular basis. Now, let me say as a nutritionally oriented physician that no one's saying that these burger products are the, the bastion of health. Yes, they are highly processed. Yes, they have uh, concentrated protein. They have salt in them. Yes, yes, that's true. But as a transition food, as a tool to help Joe meat eating American make that first step from a beef burger to a plant-based burger. If you can bite into one of these burgers and say, oh, wow, that was good. I could eat that. You, if you've opened his mind and heart just a tiny bit, then you have, then we've taken a step towards saving all of our futures. So I'm a big fan of these. There's a transition food. I eat one of these burgers every two months. We've got, we got some of the freezer. I think they've been there six months. They're a treat food. They're a novelty food. Those times when I miss eating a burger, we'll heat one up. And, and I'm satisfied for two or three months after that. So, you know, they're a treat food. Don't be eating them every day. But I think they have a great deal to offer us. And here we see uh, so many vegans around the world promoting this transition. Or see our Bivorous Butcher, whoever thought we would see that in Minnesota. Uh, Vancouver is going to host an all vegan outdoor market this summer. Whoever thought we would see that? Here's NBA star, NBA star DeAndre Jordan. He's, he's going cold turkey vegan uh, and he's doing you know, just eggs there. Uh, it's starting to happen. You are not alone. Uh, here's the folks who good catch coming up with their, these plant-based fish alternatives for tuna and salmon. I'm so welcoming these because we've got to let the oceans heal. Again, CC Spears, so you'll see this. Uh, here's a vegan pizzeria wins the top award at the World Pizza Championship. Whoever thought we would see that? And, and it's because we are, we are asking for this. We are demanding these products. We are paying for them. That's the power we have in our purchasing power. Despair not. Just let's start jumping on the plant-based wagon and use our dollars to speak for us. And so hopeful that in China that consumes half the world's pork that produces hundreds and millions of hogs every year and cuts their throat and pollutes their lands. They're spending billions on American feed corn to shovel down the gullets of these pigs. They, the, the Chinese are, are getting so fed up with this that even they are looking uh, for pork substitutes, plant-based pork. And you bet the folks at Impossible and uh, Beyond Beaver, they're stepping forward with their pork products as well. And China is, is 
promoting the, their own homegrown companies making plant-based pork. And that's going to change everything. Uh, but just the sheer weight of how many the hogs they won't be slaughtering, but the example that they will set will ripple throughout the Asian world. Yeah, and that will help the transition will happen. Kroger's now selling vegan eggs. <laughs> Whoever thought we would see that. So it's starting to happen. And, and the National Geographic Award gives its uh, National Geographic gives its awards to the most prestigious hotel. Guess what? The last year a vegan hotel won. This is because we are demanding it and paying for it. Look what our purchase power can create. And there's getting calls in, the, in, the, in England. The Britons are told they must slash their meat meals by half, cut out dairy, plant up to 5,000 hectares of trees every year if they want to get to be carbon neutral. And they're serious about it. The government's thinking of introducing a meat tax as well they should because we're all paying the so-called externalities. The, the, the cattle producer doesn't have to pay to clean up the manure that they're dumping into the rivers. That's an externality. Well, uh, it's time that the producers and the consumers of these polluting products actually pay for them. And so I, I'm all in favor of a meat tax, which I won't have to pay because I don't eat meat. And we've got to reach the kids on so many levels, educate them, but feeding them in schools and hot vegan meals rolled out in, in Ireland. Uh, and it took a courageous politician to, to do this, but it took the parents demanding this, that I want vegan foods available for my uh, kid in school. Now, people say, well, what's that gonna do to our economy? What's gonna happen to all the farmers and the ranchers? You're gonna throw them off their land. This is gonna be economic people. No, actually just the opposite is true. There's a wonderful organization called the Agricultural Fairness Alliance. I urge you to go to their website and join them. But no one wants to kick the farmers and ranchers off the land. They're, they're not the enemy. They're our brothers and sisters growing our food. Don't put them into conflict. Help these people transition. You don't have to run cattle on the land. You don't have to run a dairy operation. Grow food for people. So let's how about why don't we build one less aircraft carrier and use the billions of dollars that would go to that death machine to support our food growing neighbors as they transition to help these people, send them to the local community college to learn how to grow new crops, then buy their seeds for them, buy their equipment for them, give them crop insurance for 10 years, send their kids to college with scholarships, pay the mortgage on their house for 10 years, help these people. Don't make them suffer. Don't grind them up in the economic gears of transition. Help them, lift them up, and put them into a new setting where they can grow high fiber foods that make us healthier, not more diseased. So uh, not only do we need to use our purchasing power, we use to use our voting power. Vote out the politicians that keep forwarding, that keep uh, validating the same old farm bill that sends billions and billions of subsidies to the, to the meat producers and the, and the corn and soybean uh, growers that are growing animal fodder to shovel down the gullets of these hundreds of millions of cows and pigs and chickens. That land should be growing food for people. Help them. Um, uh, the AFA uh, has their own act called the Farms Act, and it will help uh, farmers and ranchers transition to do more sustainable food growing on their land. <clears throat> now, I, I am back to my beloved Wisconsin of my childhood. It's a dairy state. Um, and, you know, dairy is such a, an atrocious ec ecological uh, endeavor, and it's a it's an insult to to women, to the female, the species. These poor animals, the, it's uh, are, are assaulted their female nature on every level. They are uh, forcibly impregnated. There's a word for that. I start with R. I won't use that. But cows don't naturally give milk. They they just had a baby, so uh, they have to be impregnated. They carry their cow, their calf for nine months, just like a human mother does. Give birth to a 65 pound baby, uh, who and the farmer, my uncle, would come along and swipe that baby within a day at, or two at the most. Take that calf away and start sucking that milk off for his own profits and selling it to the dairy. What happens to the calves? 
the boy calves um, spend four months in a veal pen before they have their throats cut as milk-fed veal. And the female calves become four-legged milk pumps like their mothers. <clears throat> and there's such an air of sadness hanging over in the dairy barn. I, and I didn't understand why when I was a kid. Now I understand. The, the, these are all new mothers who've just had their babies taken away from them. And these tears going down their eyes are real. It's, there's such sadness. And, and for the female animals to be forcibly impregnated, to have their babies taken away and then shot in the head after five years when their milk production goes down, it's an affront to women, to the female of the species. It's time for this barbaric practice to end. <clears throat> we don't have, you know, the, to the dairy farmers, you don't have to run a dairy operation on the land. And more and more dairy farmers are going broke and they're transitioning to plant-based milks. So the AFA will help this happen. And more and more farmers are moving away from meat and dairy production. Here's a 67-year-old farmer. Uh, he's, he's in transition to growing industrial hemp. They're growing um, uh, hazelnuts uh, to turn into hazelnut milk. It's happening more and more. And, and it won't damage the economy, it'll save it. We're gonna save trillions of dollars in healthcare costs, all the coronary artery bypasses not done, the, the cancer treatments not given. We'll have millions, trillions of dollars that we can then put those solar panels on people's houses and uh, subsidize electric cars, fix the roads, provide scholarships to kids, put internet in everybody's house. Um, this is what the, the, the boon that will come to us, the, the windfall will come to us just for the simple expediency of moving from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet. Costs nothing to order the bean chili instead of the beef chili, but it will save all of our hopes, uh, all of our futures. Hope is what we become in action. So what actions are required? We've got to make meat eating as uncool as wearing fur or smoking cigarettes. You know, if a friend of yours pulled out a cigarette and lit up, what would you say? Are you still doing that at this day and age? Well, the same thing, people are ordering meat, well, you know, uh, they ought to get the message, are you still eating that stuff, knowing what we know now? <clears throat> so you're not alone. Look around you. There are organizations can help you. Uh, if you haven't visited Extinction Rebellion, please do so. It will really open up your head to the urgency here and definitely see the conversation between Dr. Peter Carter and Roger Hallam. It's, it's shocking, scary, but absolutely required viewing for anyone who cares about our futures. So locally, be an example. The people watch what you eat. They watch what you buy. They watch what you order in the restaurant. Let your example teach them. But have potlucks at your house. Share your lunch. Feed people. <clears throat> Find out where your food comes from. Find out where your water comes from and who is protecting uh, the, your water supply. And then nationally, write your Congress people. You don't want them supporting the classic farm bill. Now, how do you know who your senator and congressman really are? Well, go to whosmyrepresentative.com, type in your zip code, and presto, there will be the names, numbers of your senator and representative. And write them a letter. What should I write? Dear Honorable So-and-So, our nation's excessive meat production consumption is destroying our health, our environment, and our futures. Meat is consumed in such large unhealthy quantities because government subsidies and policies make factory farm animal products unnaturally cheap. It distorts the economics of the free market, all these free market of guys uh, su supporting current agriculture policies. Let the free market sort it out. Well, they are distorting the free market with their billion dollar subsidies to meat producing. I urge you not to support any legislation that provides subsidies or policies that promote industrial meat production and do all you can to, produce, to pass legislation to promote sustainable production of fruits and vegetables. Specifically, I urge you to support any given bills that are coming up. Go to PCRM.org and, and get on the mailing list. They will alert you when an important bill is coming up for consideration, whether to vote for or against it, depending on whether it promotes uh, animal or plant-based agriculture. No, internationally, there's vegans on every continent who know what you know, 
there's an experiencing the same thing. They see what you see and they want what you want. Do something, connect with them. Everyone can start with your own diet, reduce your um, uh, consumption of animal flesh and dairy products, which is hopefully eliminated altogether. <clears throat> and everyone has a gift, whether you can play guitar, give a talk, cook a meal. What's your gift? What can you contribute? We're in desperate straits. The polar ice caps are melting. The earth's getting warm. We need some magic. Where do we get magic? Well, young people in the internet are a source of powerful magic. <clears throat> We've seen magic before. When I grew up, the Berlin Wall was the most ominous demonstration of Soviet power is gonna be there forever and threatening to, you know, to take over every free country on the planet. We thought this would never come down. Look at the, that formidable wall and all the guns behind it. But youth and commerce had something to say about that. In 1989, we watched that wall come down in a weekend. This is the power of our intention. We watched Nelson Mandela walk out of a prison after 23 years and become the president of his country. Magic has happened before. <clears throat> it's not too late. It's not too difficult. Changing our food choices is the one thing we can do now, and it costs nothing. Think of all the things that we used to have, we used to do in our lives that are now no longer even existing in our daily existence. Remember typewriters? Remember dial telephone? Most people, most young people, you don't even remember these things. Real to real tape recorders, these were standard appliances when I was growing up. Poof, they're gone. We used to do so many things we no longer do. We used to harpoon whales in the head. That, that was a heroic thing. We look at that now and say, my God, I can't believe we used to do that. We used to buy and sell black people. Oh my God, we, I can't believe we used to do that. So it shouldn't be too hard to leave our meat eating behind, to look at, we used to, to slaughter hundreds of 20, 30 million cows. We do this to every year, old spent dairy cows. And we, to, in order to eat their flesh, good heavens. It shouldn't be that hard to leave this behind. <clears throat> We've made such great progress in restaurants, supermarkets, in the media, some more and more vegan celebrities, universities are giving courses in it. There's much more wide acceptance. So when the paleo folks say, we are everyone who want to be eating paleo. Are you kidding? You're talking about a flesh-based meal three times a day for 8 billion people. They deserve a better future than that. <clears throat> so when I'm in front of a medical school class, imploring these young doctors to open their minds and hearts to the healing properties of a plant-based diet, I know what I'm also really saying. And I know the goal that I'm really trying to accomplish. We can get the doctors recommending plant-based diets to their patients. Everything will change. My noble profession is the greatest bottleneck going in preventing this evolution to a plant-based diet. And I'm trying to free up that bottleneck. So I'm on the soapbox saying, it'll lower high blood pressure, it'll unclog your arteries, it'll retard autoimmune disease, or doing all these wonderful physical changes in the human body. But I'm really trying to save the earth and all our futures and the animals on this planet uh, by humans transitioning to a plant-based diet. And my profession has a great role to play in that. So as Samuel Jackson tells us, what's on your plate? Just all of our futures, that's all. So do what you can do. As Theodore Roosevelt said, do what you can where you are with what you have. That's the message, that's the plea. If you want to contact me and help me in my efforts to educate the doctors, go to my website, drclap.com, click on Moving Medicine Forward, and you can see how you can help us. But the best thing you can do is order a plant-based meal for lunch today and for every meal after that. Mm -hmm.